Welcome to Cloud Geek Education. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about atomic structure. In the previous lesson, we talked about diffusion, we talked about how to calculate relative atomic mass. Now, in today's lesson, we are moving on to atomic structure. Let's not waste any time. Atomic structure. First, let's explain an atom, what an atom is. What is an atom? An atom is a basic building block of matter it's a basic building block of matter right so now let's talk about a structure of an atom what it contains right so, an atom is made up of three particles. It's made up of three particles, namely protons, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So these are the three particles that make up an atom, right? So let's talk about their charges and where they are found in an atom. Particle, its charge, and where it's found, right? Where it's found in an atom. Just a simple table, right? First particle, we have a proton. Its charge is positive one and is found in the nucleus. And we have a neutron. Its charge is zero. A neutron does not have charge and it's also found in the nucleus. Right? Then lastly, we have an electron. Its charge is negative one because elect the number of electrons are det in an atom are determined the number of protons, right? That is why it charges. So protons charge electrons. Basically, that's what happens. Its charge is negative one and it is found in shells. This one is found in shells, right? So let's just sketch an atom. Let's sketch an atom. We have protons. In an atom, neutrons in an atom, then we have shells and electrons. So these two are electrons, right? Then we have protons and neutrons inside. So these are shells. These are called shells, right? So Let's move on to definition of terms. Let's define some few terms. Right? So we have atomic number. We have atomic number. What is atomic number? What is atomic number? We can say Atomic number is um, the number of protons in an atom. Number of protons in an atom. That's what that is what we call atomic number. So now let's describe mass number. Mass number. 
What is mass number? You can say mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons protons and neutrons in an atom that is what we call mass number right that is mass number so let's move on to um, electron arrangement how electrons are arranged in an atom how electrons are arranged in an atom so in order for us to see how electrons are arranged or in order for us to interpret what to interpret an atom right let's say we have an atom we have we just sketched an atom right this is just an example so in order for us to interpret this right we have to have what you call electronic configuration we have to have what you call electronic configuration electronic configuration will help us interpret what we can see in an atom right so let's talk about electronic configuration or electron configuration so what is electronic configuration this is the way in which electrons are arranged in an atom The way in which electrons are arranged are arranged in an atom, right? And we can say, um, no, arranged in an atom among among the various cells, among various cells, right? So that is what we call electron configuration. So let's have points under electron configuration. Let's talk about now how the now let's talk about how the these protons, I mean these electrons are what what leads us to draw these electrons. What are we looking at when you draw an electron in a shell, right? So first you have to know that the first shell, the first shell of any atom. I mean, no, let me, let me not say of any atom. The first shell has to accommodate accommodate a maximum of two electrons. A maximum of two electrons. Doesn't mean that it will also, for example, no, we only have hydrogen. Hydrogen only has one electron, right? So the first cell accommodates a maximum of two electrons. What about the second one? The second shell, until, until what can we say until when? Let's just say infinity. The first cell until the infinite shell accommodates A maximum of eight electrons. A maximum of eight electrons, right? So please note this. Please note this, right? Note that for the second or for the next, for the next cell to be filled. For the next cell to be filled with electrons, the previous cell, the previous cell must contain its maximum capacity of electrons. Or must contain its maximum number its maximum number of electrons right 
in other words we say we cannot move we cannot move to the or we cannot draw another shell while our first shell has not has not meet, met its maximum number of elections right for example let's take let's take um oxygen let's take oxygen for example let's take let's draw let's try and draw an oxygen atom oxygen atom so looking at our periodic table so first let's do this in order for us to have an atom we have to have the proton number first you have to have the proton number the neutron number and the electron number right but obviously we know that electrons are determined by protons right protons charge electrons so how do we get all of these three right first when you look at our periodic table here is oxygen right i showed you the key of a periodic table when you talked about how to cal calculate relative atomic mass right you know our key here a is the relative atomic mass x is the atomic symbol b is the proton or atomic number right proton look at that proton number so when you look at oxygen right here right our proton number is eight right which means here we don't have to work anything out we just write our eight here as our proton number then how do we find the number of neutrons we find the number of neutrons this way we say the relative atomic mass the relative atomic mass minus proton number minus the proton number that is how we calculate relative atomic mass so in our in this case oxygen for example our relative atomic mass is 16 which means it's this 16 minus our proton number is 8 which means our neutron number is equal to 16 minus 8 which is 8 so our neutron number is 8 what about our electron number how do we find our electron number our electron number is determined by, by the proton number let me write it here since it's not visible our electron number is 8 yeah now let's draw an oxygen atom let's draw an oxygen atom our proton number is equals to 8 neutron number is 8 and electron number is 8 so when you draw this start first by writing the number right of protons we have eight protons right we have eight neutrons then our first cell right there so we are going to write we, we are going to draw now we're going to make eight electrons one two we already have two electrons our first cell is full now we are moving on to the second cell we draw another cell if our if our shell is full now we are left with six eight minus two is six we are left with six then we are moving on two three four five and six now this is our oxygen atom there's the oxygen atom now this is how we take our electronic configuration which is ec electronic configuration electronic configuration remember what it is right it is the way in which electrons are arranged electrons we are going to look at the way electrons are arranged in the cells right so in the first cell right here we have two electrons so we're going to write down that two we are moving on put a comma in the second cell we have how many electrons one two three four we have four electrons in the second cell we're going to write that four here then we are done this is our electronic configuration our electronic configuration is two comma four right so let's do more examples let's do more examples let's take our periodic table um let's take hydrogen hydrogen atom
proton number neutron number and electron number right is equals to now let's take our proton number our proton number is one when we have our proton number we already have our electron number so let's not waste time one one now let's calculate our neutron number neutron number is equals to relative atomic mass minus proton number which is our relative atomic mass is our relative atomic mass is one this one minus our proton number is one so our neutron number is equals to zero right now let's draw the hydrogen atom I'm going to draw the hydrogen atom one proton zero neutrons first shell one we have one electron this is the hydrogen atom now let's move on to what can you draw let's take the helium atom let's draw a helium atom let's draw the helium atom proton number neutron number and electron number right our proton number of helium our proton number is two right so if, if our proton number is two our electron number is two what about our neutron number our neutron number is equals to relative atomic mass minus proton number right which is equals to our relative atomic mass of helium is four four minus two this is equals to two our neutron number is two now let's draw the helium atom we have two protons we have two neutrons right our first shell we have two electrons i mean we have two electrons yes we have two electrons one two now our shell is filled and it only has two electrons electronic configuration let's state the electronic configuration of hydrogen electronic configuration of hydrogen is one what about this one electronic configuration of helium is two because it only has two electrons in me yeah right so let's do another example let's go for lithium let's go for lithium let's go for lithium lithium atom right proton number is equals to neutron number is equals to then electron number right then our proton number here in lithium is 3 if it's 3 here it's 3 here then our neutron number is equals to relative atomic mass minus proton number our relative atomic mass of lithium is 7 the 7 minus our proton number which is 3 7 minus 3 is equals to 4 which means our neutron number is 4 now let's draw the lithium let's draw the, li the lithium atom right we have three protons and four neutrons our first shell right there we have three protons right which is one two our first shell is full because its maximum number of electrons has to be two moving on to the second shell the second shell we are only left with one then one our electronic configuration is two one two comma one that is our electronic configuration so you can do more and more examples so that you can familiarize yourself with these things it's it's not anything difficult it's so easy so you guys can just go on go on go on do it right so now let's move on to let's talk about valency i want us to talk about valency
valency right going to use this word when you talk about chemical bonding so please make sure to recall what is valency valency is the combining power of an atom that's what we call valency right so let's talk about valence electrons let's talk about valence electrons what are valence electrons for example when you look at here what are valence electrons valence electrons are the are electrons in the outermost shell so right here and helium the lithium atom we only have two shells right one two and which means our outer shell is the second shell right so what number of atoms do we have in the outer shell we have one electron so this is the valence electron right this is our valence electron so valence electrons are electrons in the outermost shell Are the electrons in the outer most shell right so now let's talk about electronegativity keep these words in mind because we're gonna use them throughout chemistry so put them in mind you want to use them a lot when you talk about bonding and you're going to use them again when you go when, when you talk about carbon chemistry there will be a lot of bonding there and we are going to talk about these weights, right? So, electronegativity. So, electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to keep electrons to itself. So that is electronegativity, the tendency of an atom to keep electrons to itself. So we can say that this right here, um, when you take for example this atom, right, this atom, but let me explain something first, let me explain atomic radius. There's a word I want to use named atomic radius when I'm explaining this, so let me, let's talk about it. Atomic radius, what is atomic radius? Atomic radius, as you can see, the word radius. Our atoms, our shells are circles, right? So in mathematics, we know that a circle has radius, right? What is a radius? A radius is from the center, right? From the center of a circle to the circumference of a circle. That is a radius, right? Half diameter. That is what we call a radius. So in this case, it's still the same. The radius is the distance between a, nu a nucleus, right? And the outermost shell that is what we call atomic radius the distance between the nuclear the nucleus since the nucleus is in the center of an atom then the outermost shell the distance between the outermost shell And the nucleus that is what we call atomic radius right guys I'll explain electronegativity when we talk about bonding let's move on we we'll talk about chemical bonding um, after we talk about the periodic table now let's talk about isotopes let's move on to isotopes isotopes What are isotopes? What are isotopes? Isotopes are atoms. These are atoms of the same element with different nucleus nucleon number. Atoms of the same element with different neutral number. But the same proton number 
are the same proton number. So when you talk about characteristics of isotopes, we can say that they have the same chemical properties They have the same chemical properties, but different physical properties. But different physical properties. So that's what you can say about isotopes. Now, let me give you examples. Examples of isotopes. I'll give you only three. Let me see what I can give you. I can give you the hydrogen. In, your, in our syllabus, we are dealing with... We want to talk about the hydrogen isotope, carbon isotopes. What is the last one? Um, Yeah, the last one is chlorine. I'll, I'll give you the three, the three of those. But I'll just draw a simple table. Element, right? The name of the isotope. The name of isotope, the proton number, right? Since we say that they have the same proton number, right? The proton number, what again? The neutron number, the neutron number, what, what else can we talk about? The number of neutrons, they have different number of neutrons, remember. The number of neutrons. Number of neutrons and the number of electrons. Number of electrons. So that is our table right there. Right, we don't know, maybe it's gonna be a very long table. We'll see about it, but because of time, I'm going to do it very, very quick. Element let's start with hydrogen. Hydrogen, right? The name of the isotope, it has three isotopes one, we have protium. Proteum is the isotope, right? It has one proton, it has one neutron, right? It has zero neutrons. I guess you know that we, we drew its atom and you saw that it has zero neutrons. I mean, yeah, zero neutrons. The number of electrons is one, right? Then the second isotope is deuterium. Deuterium. It's deuterium. Its proton number is one, right? Its neutron number is two, right? The number of neutrons is one, and the number of electrons. The number of electrons here is one, right? The neutron number, then the number of neutrons. The number of neutrons, I guess you know how we calculate them. We say the relative atomic mass minus the proton number. This is two minus one. 2 minus 1 is 1. That, that is where we got it. Right? Then the last one is um, what is the last isotope of hydrogen? It's triton. Yeah. It's triton. It's tritium. It has one proton number. One proton. Right? What about number? The nuclear number. The nuclear number is 3. And when, when the neutron number is 3, obviously it's 3 minus 1 is 2. The number of neutrons is 2. Then it only has one electron. Right? So that is hydrogen. Time, guys. Time. Time. So let's move on to... Let's move on to carbon. Let's move on to carbon. I want us to finish up with this so that in the next lesson we can start the periodic table.
In the next lesson, we can start the periodic table. Hydrogen, let's talk about carbon. Carbon, carbon also has three. I'll talk about three only. One is carbon one, I mean carbon 12. Carbon 12. It's proton number six. It's neutron number is 12. And its number of neutrons is six. And its number of electrons obviously is six. Right? Then there is carbon. We have carbon 13. Carbon 13 has six protons. It is six protons. The neutron number is 13. Just take it from here. Then 13 minus 6 is 7. The number of neutrons is 7. Then obviously its number of electrons is 6. Right? Then lastly, we have carbon 14. We have carbon 14. Proton number is 6. Neutron number is 14. 14 minus 6. This gives us 8. Then obviously our electron number is 6. So that's it about carbon. Let's move on to chlorine. I think this will be, will be enough for now. This will be enough for now. Chlorine, we have, we have chlorine 35. We have chlorine 35, right? Proton number is 17. Neutron number is 35. And the number of neutrons, obviously, 35 minus 17 gives us 18, right? Then our number of electrons is obviously is 70, right? We have chlorine 37, 17 protons, nuclear number is 37, 37 minus this gives us 20, then number of obviously is 70. So that's it with isotopes, right? So I'll meet you guys in the next lesson. Now we will be talking about the periodic table. So thank you guys for being attentive. See you guys in the next lesson.